Hey, hi everyone. Thanks for dropping by. Yep, my name is Surya. Hi, Surya. Also, there's another Surya in the in this room, and he is also new. So, looking forward to interact with the other Surya in the room. Okay, contrary to popular belief, I think those who are more patient, uh, they actually will, will stay longer in the startup, and they will try to find solutions that work. And as compared to those who are relatively less patient or impatient, they are really actually very very passionate. But sometimes the founders they get too attached to a solution and that's one thing we kind of discourage because uh, if you're too attached to a solution you might lose sight of the problem but if you're attached to the problem even if your solution doesn't work you can just pick yourself up and find another solution because your passion is solving the problem not you know finding that solution that kind of like blows everyone away i think a founder who is patient they will be able to understand not just the user needs but also understand that creating this kind of change especially in the sustainability scene takes time and they are patient and they recognize that by the same time patient doesn't mean that they are slow they still push for things but they have a longer timeline and horizon in their in their mind when they plan for what success means for them i think those su uh, startups that were more successful had a very clear target audience this target audience do not necessarily have to be the ones who are paying but they had a very clear target audience and they also had a very clear model on what the value is to the target audience and then you know even if at the start they didn't have the monetization um, model they actually focused on driving value to the target audience first and then you know the money eventually started coming in so there is a startup called Phytopia based in Malaysia this Malaysian university lecturer uh, he was actually from agri-tech sector and he felt that you know the farmers in Malaysia they could be using a lot more advanced agriculture technology and implement that technology so that they can get a higher yield and a better quality crops and when he actually went to tell the farmers that of course the, the response was we don't have money we have not tried it before we do not know how to use it and so on so what he did was actually he really understood what they wanted he was more concerned about solving their problem and not just pushing the agri-tech solution to them so what he did was he actually bought the entire thing as an investment and he kind of toned down the sophistication of the technology and he was with the farmers and he, he showed them how to use the, these products, how to actually increase the yield and he himself bought the higher quality products from them at a higher price than the market price and that kind of built a system of trust so actually if you see here in this entire model there's no money that he's making he eventually went on to selling this food in schools and in, in the form of a salad bar so that, that's like their customer facing front and this has been working really well even during the pandemic they were actually serving students and the food delivery wise and everything they, they broke even I think sometime during last year so that, that's one example where they really understand their target uh, market and the founder is also patient the founder was not someone who thought okay I know everything about agri-tech let me just go and show them how to use it he actually understood the complexity that was surrounding the adoption and he kind of invested time and invested his effort into making sure that even if it's a simpler technology, it was adopted and he bought the confidence of the farmers. So that really understanding the, the audience as well as what the value you're providing. A very simple word is your USP, what's your unique selling proposition. I just went around a very roundabout way to explain that. <laughs> and uh, we, we have a startup called Light of Hope, uh, they are from Philippines. Their model is, is actually very simple as well. So what Jovi does is, his background is mechanical engineering and his first idea started when he wanted to put a light source in a, in a recycled plastic bottle and give that recycled plastic bottle and a light source to a rural uh, area without electricity. That idea it developed into the light source being fueled by solar energy and then you, there was a combination of a circular economy as well as energy solution. Of course, uh, the issue is who is going to pay for it. You can't go to rural community and ask them to pay an exorbitant amount for electricity, right? Uh, there, there was, I mean, probably a reason why these rural areas, in infrastructure-wise, they were left out. And the founder acknowledged that and he really tried to understand what their needs were. First, he, he ran it off more of a charity model. But when we came to our program, what we actually did was we made sure that there was a monetization model around it. And essentially what is happening is uh, his idea evolved from just the solar electricity to actually being able to provide 3G and also cellular access such that people can actually uh, have connection, not just uh, light and electricity, but connection. He has built the dashboard which allows telecom providers and third parties to actually understand what is the electricity usage 
in these areas as well as what like what is the demand these areas are actually you know having so they're able to give all these insights and that's how he is basically moving towards the monetization model the solution itself is kind of simple but it's his attachment to the problem and he's he really is very passionate about making sure that people have access to electricity that allows him to be patient and find as many avenues as possible to monetize and continue this and now that he has this model he actually is able to serve more people and actually scale it and that actually benefits both the startup as well as the people i think for one of the challenges that we've in this field right it's actually um i'm not sure if you guys have heard of the term but like eco anxiety but basically you know we are trying to kind of like tackle issues that is a worldly problem right like climate change like how do you quantify that how do you understand that and it feels so much bigger than you that it's very difficult to solve and i think a lot of people in the space and the founders right this sometimes it's very easy to get overwhelmed with the the complexity as well as how big the problem is i i ground myself to the fact that my work is in kind of empowering other people and bringing the ecosystem of solutions together finding collaborations and so on so i think it's still grounded but for those who are more directly involved in like climate action it is a challenge um to kind of navigate the entire situation and this is a problem that they're waking up every day thinking of how to solve so it does get to them after a while i mean not a lot of people talk about it but founder uh, burnout and also founder anxiety is a very uh, common thing uh, which founders usually don't talk about because you know maybe they they feel that you know they are kind of alone in the journey or they feel like you know there's not something they, they they need to talk to their team members about and so on but these are common things and uh i think for myself there was a period where like i was uh, super burnt out every day i was waking up thinking of like how to solve this how to kind of get funding and and, and like rejected and so on we kind of took a break uh entirely so after the program ended and so on we kind of just allocated the entire month to just take a break and just regain our kind of sense of calm and everything and then we kind of continued again